Hi boys and girls, I'm Mrs. Cortez, and today I will be reading chapters 3 and 4 from the story, Heidi Heckelbeck and the Christmas Surprise, by Wanda Coven. Chapter 3, Fit for a Queen. Heidi found a piece of rope on a hook in the garage. She handed it to Henry. Don't strangle yourself, partner, said Heidi. Henry rolled his eyes. Hardy har har, he said. Henry and Heidi put on their coats and headed for the mailbox. Heidi popped her letter in and put up the flag. Henry mounted the garden gate as if it were a horse. It was made of logs, so it was easy to straddle. He lifted the metal bar and latched the gate and used it for the reins. Then he bounced up and down and twirled the rope over his head. Wahoo! he shouted. Heidi folded her arms and watched her brother. She noticed a car coming down the street. Hey, that's the Lancaster's car, she thought. Lucy's here, she shouted. Heidi had been expecting Lucy. They had planned a play date earlier in the week. Heidi ran to greet her friend. Lucy hopped out of the car and waved goodbye to her mother. The girls held hands and jumped up and down. They ran into the house. Wait for me, cried Henry as he hopped off the gate and hurried after the girls. Let's play dress up, suggested Heidi as soon as they got inside. Okay, said Lucy. No, thanks, said Henry. I need to get back to the corral. Henry galloped to his room and the girls headed for the playroom. Heidi opened the costume trunk and pulled out a red velvet dress with white fur trim. I'm going to be the Christmas queen, she said. Lucy rummaged around in the trunk and pulled out a white satin dress. It had ruffles around the skirt and sleeves and sparkly sequins all over. And I'll be Princess Snowflake, she said. She's a winter fairy. The girls changed into their dresses. Heidi put on a bejeweled tiara. Lucy wrapped a feathery boa, feathery white boa around her neck and shoulders. Here, use this, said Heidi. She handed Lucy a silver wand. Then the girls each slipped on a pair of glittery high-heeled shoes. You look fabulous, darling, said Heidi. So do you, said Lucy, except a Christmas queen needs more jewels. Heidi looked in the trunk. She found some more gold bead necklaces and put several strands around her neck. Then she remembered her mother's charm bracelet. I'll be right back, said Heidi. She ran to her parents' room. She popped open mom's jewelry box and helped herself to the charm bracelet. I'll just borrow it for a little while, she thought. I'll put it right back when I'm done. Heidi zipped back to the playroom. Look at this, she said as she held up the bracelet for Lucy to see. Lucy's eyes lit up. Wow, that's so beautiful, she said. Heidi showed Lucy all the movable charms. Lucy worked each one. Can you help me with the toggle, asked Heidi. Sure, Lucy said. Lucy stuck the silver T into the loop. Then Heidi shook her wrist. The charms tinkled. And now it's time for the royal Christmas tea, said Heidi in a proper English accent. Oh yes, said Lucy in the same accent. Let's prepare to have tea. Lucy and Heidi set out play teacups and saucers. They filled the little teapot with water. Then they arranged plastic pastries on a three-tiered serving tray. They had miniature cupcakes, donuts, pretzels, pies, and cookies. Then the Christmas Queen and Princess Snowflake sat at the table and sipped their tea and nibbled their pastries. You have a superb pastry chef, your royal highness, said Princess Snowflake. Why, thank you, Princess, said the Queen. Then she shook a silver bell with a wooden handle. And now it's time to light the royal Christmas tree, said the queen. Will you do me the honor, princess? I shall be delighted, said Princess Snowflake. 
Lucy waved her sparkly wand, then Heidi quickly switched on a tabletop Christmas tree. The colored lights glowed in the evergreen branches. Simply magical, said the queen. Princess Snowflake curtsied. Perhaps you could provide us with some royal Christmas snow, said the queen. As you wish, your highness, said the princess. Lucy waved her wand again. Then the girls looked out the window. They both squealed with delight. Oh my gosh, Heidi cried. It worked. It's really snowing. Lucy looked at her wand in disbelief. Wow, how did I do that? You must have a magic wand, said Heidi. Lucy giggled. Let's go out and play in the snow. Yeah, said Heidi. The girls wriggled out of their dresses, put on their play clothes, and ran downstairs. Henry, it's snowing, Heidi called on the way down. Henry darted out of his room and followed the girls. They bundled up in hats, mittens, and scarves. Then they ran outside into the swirling snow. Chapter 4 Snow Day Heidi and Lucy caught snowflakes on the tips of their tongues. Henry scooped a handful of snow and packed a snowball. Then he threw it smack into Heidi's back. Heidi whirled around and glared at Henry. Uh, you know what this means, said Heidi. Henry shook his head. This means war! Henry squealed and ran from Heidi. Heidi mounted a ball of snow in her mittens and threw it at her brother. It whizzed past his ear. Henry knelt down and made another snowball. This time he threw it at Lucy. It hit Lucy in the back of the head. She cringed as the slush slid down her neck. Hit him! Lucy shouted. Heidi and Lucy bombarded Henry with snowballs. Henry ducked and ran away. Then he stumbled into the snow. The girls continued to pelt him with snowballs. Stop! begged Henry. Stop! I surrender! Heidi threw one more snowball. It hit Henry right on the bottom. Heidi and Lucy laughed. Okay, the war's over, said Heidi. Let's make a snowman, suggested Lucy. Great idea, Heidi said. They each began to roll a ball of snow across the yard. The more they rolled, the bigger the snowballs got. Heidi's snowball got so big it wouldn't bit budge. This one will be the base, she said. They used Lucy's ball of snow for the middle. Henry's snowball became the head. Heidi found two pieces of charcoal in the garage for the eyes. Lucy added twigs for the arms. Henry put his hat and scarf on the snowman. Then they stood and admired their creation. They named him Cool Dude. My hands are freezing, said Lucy. Same here, Heidi said. I'm turning into an icicle, said Henry. Let's go inside. Everyone piled into the mudroom and hung up their wet clothes. Mom made hot chocolate with mini marshmallows and candy cane stirring sticks. She set a bowl of popcorn on the table. Heidi and Lucy stirred their hot chocolate and licked the candy canes. Henry dropped popcorn into his hot chocolate and scooped it out with a spoon. Heidi and Lucy stared at Henry. What? he said. That's so disgusting, Heidi said. It's good, said Henry, slurping a piece of soggy popcorn. You should try it. Heidi rolled her eyes. Then the doorbell rang. Mom went to the front door and brought Lucy's mother into the kitchen. Mrs. Lancaster smiled. Did you have a fun afternoon? she asked. Did we ever, said Lucy. Lucy told her mother all about the royal Christmas tea and playing in the snow. Listening to Lucy reminded Heidi of the charm bracelet. She had forgotten all about it when they went out to play in the snow. She looked at her wrist. The bracelet wasn't there. She pushed up her sleeve. No bracelet! 
Oh, no, Heidi thought. I lost Mom's charm bracelet. She didn't say a word. She knew Mom would be very upset with her for taking the bracelet without asking. I'll have to look for the bracelet after Lucy goes home, she thought. Heidi waited for Lucy to finish her hot chocolate. It seemed like Lucy and her mom would never go home. As soon as they were out the door, Heidi ran straight to the playroom. Thank you for listening. We'll continue with the next chapter soon.